Hey there, uh, I mentioned a while ago that I was kind of at a loss as to video ideas, especially given uh, that people like the, the videos that are more oriented towards finance rather than science and engineering. So I was Googling looking for basically courses, university courses and, and uh, numerical methods for finance when I came across um, this uh, page from uh, Georgia Tech, I think it is. Yeah, Georgia Tech. Um, they have a basic syllabus here, and we've covered most of this stuff before, uh, solutions to nonlinear equations. Uh, in fact, they did the same thing I did. Um, they used it to solve like uh, for implied volatility, polynomial and piecewise polynomial interpolations. We've done, we haven't done that explicitly, and I may do that uh, eventually because there's some interesting things you could do with that and, and solving partial differential equations, but we have touched on it a bit. Uh, Brownian motion of Monte Carlo. We've done several things before, but we haven't really done anything um, on this, what they, which they call um, matrix uh, factorizations, matrix decompositions. Well, well, we have touched a little bit on the SVD, the singular value decomposition, in the context of um, compressing an image, but they have uh, LU decomposition, Cholesky. Uh, Cholesky deals with um, symmetric matrices. If you're a scientist or engineer, you've definitely come across eigenvalue problems before. Uh, but I thought I would start off and maybe go through these. Um, they don't really mention QR decomposition here, do they? There's another one called QR that's, that's uh, commonly used. But I think we'll start off with a video basically on LU decomposition, what it is, and why you might want to use this. Uh, and if there's time, I'll, I'll go back to SVD and do that, but um, I don't want this uh, video to go overly long. So we'll start off with LU and, and see, um, see how it goes. Okay, so we're not going to need a lot of imports this time, just NumPy, LU, LU factor, and LU solve. And these two are kind of uh, grouped together. You use these in conjunction, in, in tandem, to solve linear systems of equations like this. So, as we've talked about before, uh, systems like this come up all the time in any sort of numerical analysis. Uh, when we did our stock Monte Carlo uh, code, we simulated a whole bunch of potential stock runs, um, and that turned out to be a linear system of equations, kind of like this, except our matrix was sparse. We did some differential equations, we had the same, uh, same type of thing, it ended up being a linear system of equations with this matrix essentially representing a derivative. So again, these, these come up all the time. So I think we're going to use this basically as a more concrete example. So we're going to start off um, solving again ax equal to b and we're going to use, use this equation here. Now if you were to solve this by hand uh, using basic Gauss, Gaussian elimination you'd come up with some sort of augmented matrix. In fact, let me, uh, let me type that out. So you'd build an augmented matrix like this, where uh, everything to the left of this bar is this uh, square matrix here, and then these are your constant coefficients, the right-hand side of this equation here. And you would do all sorts of like row manipulations to get this such that everything, every, the diagonal to the left of this bar is all equal to 1, and then anything kind of below that diagonal here is equal to 0. In other words, it's what they, um, what's typically referred to as an upper triangular matrix. And that's all well and good. It's computationally expensive. It takes about, uh, if you have an n by n matrix, it takes roughly n cubed uh, operations to, to, to do that. But it has another potential issue um, in that if the right-hand side of this equation changes, so suppose this matrix represented some sort of like a derivative operator um, that doesn't change, and this right-hand matrix changes, this whole thing changes all the time. And every time you want to solve the system, you have to do this um, Gaussian elimination, which again takes roughly n cubed uh, operations to do. So what we're going to do is just focus uh, on this square matrix here for the time being. So let me get rid of this, uh, this down here. So what we want to do is take our matrix A and factor it into the product of two other matrix matrices. We'll call those L and U respectively. Um, so A is equal to LU. Again, I think a concrete example is uh, useful to look at. So here's our A matrix, and here are the two matrices we want to decompose it into. I've already done the, the calculation. And now you'll notice uh, something about this is that this matrix here is lower triangular, hence the, uh, the, the, the name L, right? Everything below the main diagonal is, uh, has a value. Everything above it is zero. And this one, again, is upper triangular, hence U. Everything above the main diagonal, everything above is, you know, a finite number, and everything below that is zero. 
So let us rewrite this equation here, uh, substituting these two matrices in for this square one here. So I'll do that in a different cell, in fact, just so that we can kind of go back to here for, for reference. So our original equation here can now be written like this down here. So what does this buy us? Well, it just looks, looks like we made it uh, a more complicated uh, problem. Uh, we still don't know any of these x's, but what we can do is say, well, this matrix here times this matrix, this column vector here of unknowns is just another column vector that we can call, let's call it x tilde. And in fact, let me write that out explicitly here. I'll put a, a brace underneath here and write it out as x tilde. So this is what we're defining to be x tilde. Again, it's just another column vector of unknowns. And this allows us to make a simplification to this equation. Again, let me write out write that out explicitly. I'm going to write out that relationship explicitly, so I'll do that right below here. And this now can be solved easily by uh, forward substitution. This first row essentially says that x is equal to to 20. And once we have that uh, x1, we can put that into the next row and get a quarter of x1 tildes plus x2, x2 tilde uh, is equal to 14, and so on. You do the same thing for the third row and the fourth row, and now you know this vector x tilde. And now that we have that, we can go back to our definition of x tilde and then kind of repeat the same process to get x. Okay, something happened to my audio, so I'm going to do a bit of a voiceover here. Okay, so I'm going to write out that uh, relationship explicitly right below here. Okay, so remember that we define x tilde to be the product of our upper triangular matrix times our vector of unknowns. So, okay, now that we have this, we could solve it pretty trivially again. Just like before, we, uh, we solve this via substitution, but this time it's backward substitution. The bottom line of the matrix basically, it basically gives us the solution for x4. Once you have x4, you plug it into the line above, you get the solution for x3. Once you have that, x2 and x1, and then you've solved the entire, entire problem. Okay, so now having kind of gone through that background, let's go through and do this in code. So I'm not going to go through the details of how these matrices are calculated algorithmically. Uh, I could do that if you want, uh, but there are plenty of good uh, YouTube videos already out there on how to calculate L and U by hand, but it's essentially just a Gaussian elimination. But I'm going to use the functions we imported to calculate these, and I'm going to keep this uh, this little test matrix we've been using and then code it up in the cell kind of below all of this. Okay, so here's our A matrix. Uh, here is our B matrix, our matrix of known values. Uh, the linear algebra code oftentimes needs these to be explicit, explicitly shaped as column vectors, so I do that here. And let's just print these out to make sure they came uh, come in okay. So we're going to print A, print B. Um, cool, they look good, and so let's now move on and do the actual LU decomposition. Okay, so let's get rid of this here, and let's call this function. Now, I brought up the documentation page for the uh, LU function in SciPy, uh, SciPy's Linear Algebra Library. Uh, here it is. And you notice that there's a little bit of a difference here. It decomposes A into three matrices, a P, and then an L, and a U. And what this P is, is called a uh, permutation matrix. So if we go back here, did I delete? Um, I deleted the, uh, the augmented matrix. But if you recall that when you do Gaussian elimination, sometimes you swap rows around just for convenience. Uh, it makes, makes everything a lot easier. Uh, this algorithm kind of does the same thing. as It's essentially a, a uh, Gaussian elimination type of algorithm. So what this P does is it keeps track of those row changes. Um, I chose this matrix here, the one way up here, uh, to not really have any um, row manipulation needed. So for us, that P uh, matrix is going to be the identity. So uh, where are we here? Uh, the function call just takes our matrix that we are interested in uh, and some optional stuff, but we don't really need to worry about the optional stuff. So P comma L comma U is equal to L U A. Let's just make sure these uh, came out okay. So print P, this should be the identity matrix. And indeed it is. Print, uh, let's just print them all out. Print L and print u. 
So there's our lower triangular matrix L. And here is our uh, upper triangular matrix U. And we should be able to get back our original matrix. Uh, let's get rid of this here. And instead of just print LU, let's just multiply them together. And this should give us back our original A matrix. And that looks about right. Let's just print out our A matrix underneath to verify. In fact, let's not do that. Let's just do, we'll use the all close command. NP dot all close L times U comma A. True. So we're good. Now, if we actually want to solve this system, uh, we could use the LU factor and LU solve command. So just very quickly down here, uh, LU factor returns two things, um, a kind of a combined matrix LU, and I'm just going to call it P, which are the, uh, the, the, the permutation matrix. This is equal to LU factor A. Does that run? Yes, it does. And now we can call um, LU solve our, uh, what did I call it, lowercase LU. And I probably should not have called it that because it's going to mess up um, the, uh, the command above. So let me change this to a capital LU and make that a capital LU. So I'll run that. And we need to pass in the B vector as well. So there's our solution, same as above. Or did I calculate it above? I don't think I ever did. Uh, let's just run it through the linear algebra solve command and see what we get. So uh, np.linalg solve, oh, sorry, that's a dot solve a comma b. And we get the same thing back, which is not surprising. So uh, the question arises, why would you do this uh, kind of multiple step thing with the LU decomposition where you can just do this and you get the same results? Well, as I mentioned earlier, both the LU decomposition and uh, general Gaussian elimination uh, require order n cubed operations to basically invert this matrix. But in many cases, you want to wind up with situations where this matrix doesn't change. What changes is this B, B column vector here. So what we can do to speed up the calculation, if we have to kind of solve many of these types of problems, is to calculate our L and U matrices in advance. Where are they here? And then we solve via forward and backward substitution. And this is of order N squared. So you get a significant speed up uh, doing it that way. And so I'm going to come down here and just kind of make a toy problem and just demonstrate that before signing off. So I'm going to create a random matrix of size. Uh, what is this? 500 by 500 and then a corresponding uh, B vector here. So let me run that. And I'm just going to repeatedly solve that using the LU solve um, commands up here and then the, the, um, the regular linear algebra solve that we, that we called here. So uh, here we are, I'm just going to record the start and end time. Oh, I should actually call in, I should bring in the um, time function. So from time, import time, run that. And now let's just see how long this takes. This, this um, solves this equation uh, 10,000 times. So obviously I edited, edited this down for time, but we got 30 seconds. Let me run it one more time and see what we get. About the same, 30 seconds. So let's do the same thing here with LU. So we set our start time, uh, we do the decomposition, we do the loops to solve and print out the total time uh, required. 1.25 seconds, so vastly, vastly faster. And the reason I called this variable x1 and x2 is just so that we can compare. So let's do an MP all close, x1 comma x2. All close. What the hell is going on here? True. Awesome. So that's basically how to use uh, LU decomposition, LU factorization in SciPy. 
Um, as an aside, please let me know if you want me to kind of go over uh, other things in more detail, because I've skipped over a lot of stuff in this, kind of the whole Gaussian elimination thing, and I've completely neglected uh, how the L and U matrices are, uh, are actually calculated. So basically, if you want me to go over some of the background information, and this applies to other, other uh, videos as well, uh, please let me know. Uh, just leave a comment below, and I can definitely uh, attempt to accommodate you. So I think I'm going to do a uh, companion video to this where we use the singular value decomposition to, one, do the same thing we did here, um, solve a linear system of equations, but there's a the whole concept of pseudo-inverses and um, least squares type of fitting that the uh, singular value decomposition lends itself to. So I want to do a quick video on that in the not-too-distant future, but uh, until then, see you later.